We are under construction and uh, I'm just 10 meters from my kitchen but it's all empty right now and we created this outside kitchen because the facilities are really small and actually not bad. I wanted to make one of my comfort foods when I'm tired, when I want to be filled and really happy. The thing that I cook, this is that recipe and it's just potatoes, eggs and onion. There are small additions for a higher taste that I want to give you. But originally, if you have these three things, you're going to make a great one. And it's going to be our breakfast. And so it's going to be our breakfast. I have bad news for you, Bahar, because there are lots of ustas around, workers around. The smell is going to go to their noses as well. So we have to share. So we're going to have like small slice. If we're ready, we can start. And meanwhile, at some point, I want to show you the kitchen we have made outside. Now, I'm going to use three potatoes. Whatever you have would do. The drier the better, it's going to be crunchy. Because of bar, normally I would do with one big one, but I'm going to do twice as much. So I have three medium-sized potatoes. Yeah. I'm going to dice them. We are on a diet. I need to eat a lot when I can eat. That's not <laughs> dieting, <diet>. baby. <laughs> that I should say. So I'm going to dice them like centimeters thick, like this. I didn't peel off the skins because it really increases the taste and because it's also nutrition. If you have lots of soil around it, you can use an organic scrub to scrub the skins of the potatoes. I really don't want like perfect dices. These edges, some of them become crunchier and I like that crunchiness. So I don't mind if some of them are big, some of them are smaller. These are three potatoes diced because we have increased it, it became quite big. It's a nice thing that we're going to learn. And I have like a 20 to 24 centimeters pan and this much of potatoes, if I put them and try to cook them in a way, fry them, this is going to be small. So the end result is going to be on that pan, but I have a bigger one. So if you are okay with dirtying up two pans, first use a bigger one because Potatoes are rich on starch and it's going to be a little sticky. When I want to try to fry it, it's going to stick in any kind of pan, like the Teflon and those kind of things because I don't like using them. The highest I go for is the ceramic pans because I find the other ones really unhealthy. What you should do to make the pan a little more non-stick is to first turn on the heat. Every surface, skin, glass, everything has actually little bumps on it. But when you heat up, what happens is it expands. The surface area becomes a little smoother and it closes the small gaps behind. So by just heating, the pan becomes a little more nonstick. And the second thing, of course, after it gets heated up is oil. It's another agent which fills those holes in a way and helps. I'm going to put eight to 10 tablespoons of olive oil and I turn and make it all around like this. When you first put the oil and it's not hot enough, it's going to be like thicker. But as it gets heated, it becomes more like watery, more runny. That should be the time we have to put our potatoes. I'm putting them like almost like one by one so that I, with my hands, separate them when they stick together. Now, all the potatoes are in. But I'm not going to just directly stir it because I really want, like the meat, the sides which are now touching the pan to really get cooked and then after I want to stir. Otherwise, the heat on the pan decreases and the other side of the potato gets on the pan and usually gets stuck. Some of the potatoes will get stuck anyway, but this is going to decrease it. And for the heat, first three, four minutes is going to be really high, but then we're going to lower it. But because it's like kind of windy and we're not on the full highest, but when you're doing it at home, please decrease it a bit because we want that creaminess in the inside to be really cooked. So that can only be achieved if the potatoes take like 15 minutes to cook. This is going to cook for a while, so I want to show you my kitchen. This is the kitchen I want to show you inside. I have drawn this when I was 28 to like a dream journal. My boyfriend saw it and for my birthday, he made this. What's uh, a boyfriend? What's Everybody a boyfriend? wants one. <laughs> He was a really good guy, thank you. What I did is it has magnets in it, so like the knives and etc. they stick. So if I move this around, nothing much happens. 
and this is actually like five pieces so you can carry them in the boxes so i carry this kitchen to almost every place i go these are tomatoes from my mom's garden and my garden this is the sink we have actually running water from the garden's pipe i've even connected the dishwasher I have my refrigerator fully working and this is the pantry in the apartment. This is the seriousness of the construction. Ta -da! This is the empty kitchen, everyone. It's going to be all white. Basically, that's it. Now back to the food. Okay, together with this, something that is going to be a simple ingredient and give a lot of flavor is the onion. I'm going to have one medium-sized onion and I'm going to slice it. Now, how I take the potatoes off, like I scrape the bottom like this and take the onions, squeeze them a bit. In first two minutes, the onions will be on top like this, potatoes are going to be down. Then I'm going to mix it and after like 15 minutes, when you feel that the outside is crunchy and inside is creamy, it's all going to be done. One thing I should say, if this was done in a Spanish way, they wouldn't want to change the color of the potatoes. It's a different approach. This is like the Millard reaction in meat. The outside crunchiness, the caramelization kind of thing is something I like. So I want to use it that way. I also want to add about a heap teaspoon of salt. For example, this is the purslane. I can cut it from here and get the whole branch. Or what I can do, I can cut it from here so that this branch can grow more. This is same for all kinds of greens. So if it's in your garden and it can grow still, it's not the end of the season, do this. There's also a strawberry, maybe you can take it as well. And these are Bahar strawberries. Purslane have these black seeds and when you put it on the soil, it can grow almost everywhere. It's like figs. They're really fast on growing. So when you have like seeds like this, don't panic because a friend of mine did. It's nothing wrong and they're also edible and crunchy. I like them really much. Years ago, the ice cream makers wanted a recipe from me and I wanted to include these purslane seeds as well. You can use them, but you can also give them back to the soil so that more purslane can come out. In a classic breakfast, especially in the summertime, we have tomatoes, some greens and of course olives. And we also have cheese. This is the cheese that Bahar has made from fresh milk. Actually, it's your recipe. And it's fresh cheese. Keeps you really fine for the whole day. And very delicious. My onions are browning. Potatoes are getting crunchier. Now it's time for the eggs. I have six eggs. If you're more crowded, you can increase it. All these are going to go to our garden. It looks ugly right now, but you throw it like this and then you close. It was like a hole almost this big. Day by day, this happens. And afterwards, whatever we put, it grows incredibly, really, really nice. So for these eggs, I'm going to add a bit of salt and work has just arrived. So uh, to celebrate that, I want to add another ingredient. No. Bit of cream. <laughs> no. Yes! You don't need to do it. And just, yes, two tablespoons of You are the cream. reason of the cheat bread. This will increase the taste. We have a saying in Turkish, it's called Osuruklu Göte Arpaçöri Bahane To the farty ass, barley biscuit, barley tea bread or something is an excuse. So fill in the blanks. <laughs> This is also done. Now, this is almost ready. As you have seen, it shrunk, but I'm not going to use this pan because I want a thick and a really good texture. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to heat up the pan again. Then we add the oil, wait for a while for the oil to surround everywhere. Now I have another addition and this is for to be outside. I'm going to add a bit of sesame seeds to the bottom, like this. That's bit for the giants. <laughs> I'm going to put finally a bit of salt to the potatoes and put them inside. I want to put the eggs now. 
and I'm making sure that it's going to everywhere. A bit of a shake. Now, I'm going to lower the heat quite a lot and put the lid on so that the inside also cooks. I didn't open the lid for about 10 minutes. And now I'm going to put some more sesame seeds on the top. I don't have an oven right now, but if you do, you can do this, like take this directly to the oven, to the grill, and it will work. I free the edges. I shake the potatoes. Okay, they're free. So what I'm going to do, I close it, take it away from the heat so my hands won't will up be on top of the heat. The lid has to be something like this or it could be a plain plate that you cover. If there are edges, it will stick and you wouldn't like it. Now, I take it out, turn it very fast and take it out and then slide it. Oop. It looks like cement. I had dropped a few potatoes. Mm. <laughs> Summer is coming. We are just Bahar one minute away from eating this ultimate potatoes and eggs. If you're ready. Now, whoa, here you go. All good. Now, finally. That's the inside. Wow. Crunchy outside, creamy potatoes, eggs all around, all good, perfect. Mm. It does really like seeds. Mm -hmm. It's really crunchy. I wasn't expecting that it much crunch. It's a small difference, but makes a big, big difference. Change. <laughs> this is beautiful Istanbul under a fig tree, autumn wind. For now, that's it guys. Sorry about this inconvenient place, but I wanted to show you how everything is going here. Take great care of yourselves. Please tell me how you're surviving through COVID. Please keep me informed. Bye. <laughs>